Okay, guys, here we are on the shores of Moose Lake, northern Minnesota, and uh, you're on the verge of a great expedition into the North Woods. That's right, just a little bit north of uh, Eli, Minnesota, here at the Williamson Hall Outfitters. We have the goal here for the next week is in 29 to 74 degree range temperatures to go out canoeing, camping, and fishing with uh, these five guys sitting around here. And Sean's our first guy here. So my name is Sean Dunn. This is my uh, fifth summer up here. This is my second trip this summer, my fourth trip in the last two years. So I like this place. I'm looking forward to catching some fish. Yeah, I'm Ken Baker. I've been up here a lot. I used to be younger when I first came up here. Uh, always enjoyed it. I've been with these guys several times, except for the newbies. And we'll educate them some way, somehow. I am Jerry Fickus, uh, and I am a rookie on this trip for the first time. Looking forward to it. I'm Bill Fishbein. I'm, uh, like Ken, been coming up here since 1996. and. Uh, it's always a good chance to get together with a bunch of good guys, catch some fish, and tell a bunch of stories. And some, some that are true. <laughs> some, <laughs> some that are true. Yeah. I'm Jim. I'm Ben's dad. Uh, it's our first trip, and I just came for the local craft beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. We'll see you out on the water. So this is at Williams and Hall's The Outfitter. This is the lodge where we stay at just the night before. Jim's getting into some wild turkey. I'm pouring that for Pam. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we have Sean is in here in this red bag. Jim is down there in that blue bag. I'm up here in this green bag. We just stay here the night before to prep and to get a good night's sleep. Um, and then early in the morning, we're going to get up, get breakfast, load all of our gear into the canoes, and then we're going to hightail it out of here. morning it's uh, right around 6 30 in the morning we have just got all of our stuff packed up and we're about to get some coffee and some bacon and we put all of our gear into one of those boats like that so all of the gear goes on the bottom probably get two or three guys to sit in the boat and then your kayak or your canoes will go on top and they'll take us way out there to skip a lot of the paddling and then they drop us off and we'll head out from there. I kept looking, I'm like, you know, I can only wear so many clothes at one time. Yeah. I've yeah. got, I've got, it's a lady, I've got this. Thanks again, man. Yep. You guys enjoy? All right, so we just got dropped off here at our first portage. Oh, We've got all back. of our gear <laughs> and everything. We're going to load up, carry it on over to the next body of water, and keep moving. We went over here to check out these other dogs. There's yeah. a couple more over there. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, thank you very much. Yeah. 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 You guys have a good trip. Oh, we... At this point, the motorboat had dropped us off near Prairie Portage. Our goal was then to move east to the next waypoint in the midsection of Knife Lake. What took the motorboat just 20 or 25 minutes to get from the outfitter to the portage took us over nine hours canoeing from the portage to our campsite. So part of this trip is going from lake to lake to lake and we have portage in between and portaging is taking all the gear out of the boat, moving it from one side to the other and then taking the boat along with it. Sometimes on this terrain it's not the easiest to get done. Because you don't want to break the eggs. <laughs> That's right.
So we've been paddling all day here looking for a, a campsite here in the afternoon. Just found this one, has a beautiful view. But it doesn't reach out too much back there. And with six guys, this may not be big enough. So back there is my dad's tent. Here is my tent cot. And as we come around here, it's the main gathering area. The campfire, all of our bear barrels with the food in them. There's Sean's hammock. Ken's tent over there. And Bill and Jerry are in the back. Alright, so coming back to the back of the campsite is the latrine. And this will be it for the next couple days for uh, six grown grizzly men. For water, we use these 10 liter gravity fed water filters. Our process was simple. Take these out in the canoe, fill it up with lake water, and hang it from a tree. Gravity would then pull the water down through that white filter in the middle of the bag, through the tube, and then into those jugs at the bottom. We use this water for all of our drinking and cooking. And let me tell you, the water tasted delicious. It's evening time here at camp. Uh, as you saw, those guys are just getting dinner ready. And it's getting down to, I think, 32, 33 degrees tonight. So we are all layered up and uh, getting ready for the evening. This part of the footage, the audio got scrubbed on it, but I wanted to show you what was going on and do a voiceover. Here, Sean is filling up a jet boil, which is a small canister of fuel connected to a flame, and we would boil water and put it into a Nalgene bottle, as you see there. From there, the bottle was very hot, so we had to put it inside of a sock. Typically, an old soccer sock or an oversized one would work just fine. We would tie it off and then proceed to put it between our knees, right where the main artery was, and what this would do would heat the blood and transfer it all over your body. Okay, so just got bedded down for the night. Um, I'm in the sleeping bag here in the tent. And uh, it's uh, going to get down really low and cold tonight. I think somewhere in the 30s, 31, 32. Uh, the thing is, is I've been having a lot of condensation in my tent. And I'm worried about that freezing and then bringing more cold air inside of the tent. Um, got a pretty good sleeping bag here, so this should keep me warm. Um, and got a pair of hot hands. There they are. Just in case get, things get worse. It should be a really cold night, though. All right, looks like we just made it to Eddy Falls. Uh, it's a small waterfall about a mile and a half from camp. Uh, we paddled over here uh, 40 minutes, 45 minutes, and uh, we're going to hike up those falls a little bit and see how it looks. Okay, just got up to the top of Eddy Falls. It looks like this is what feeds into it. Man, is that spectacular. We just finished up hiking Eddy Falls and going to Eddy Lake there at the top. Everyone's back at their boats now, and we're going to head back out on Knife Lake here, do a little fishing around the corner, 
and maybe circle back, be back to camp mid-afternoon. There he comes. Small mouth. Nice job. Yeah. We'll put him on the stringer. Not sure if we're going to keep him yet or not. Hold on there, buddy. So the tent cot did not work out as it said online. Way too much condensation in it. What we've done now is borrowed a tarp from Sean, ran a line down the center, and pulled the cot part off of the tent and just set it inside there. And we'll see if there's any less condensation tonight. Yeah. Kind of looks like a homeless camp. So here at the camp, um, just to wash our dishes off here, we just give them a swish in the water with a little dish rag. This is lake water is pretty clean. We've been drinking it all this week. Um, and not much soap or anything, but uh, it's clean enough to eat off of. Uh, we're all getting packed up here, getting ready to leave. Today's going to be our travel day. I think we got nine hours of traveling, and uh, we might stop and stop at Thunder Point and do a little hike up that way. This is definitely a. Vantage point at the boundary waters that I've never seen. Oh, yeah. All right, we made it the last day here to the pickup. We got the boats in the uh, pickup boat here, all of our gear. We got one more boat coming, and that'll be the end of a good trip. All in all, A plus.